أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين وهو خير ناصر ومعين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين Dear children, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh It is another revision lesson from module 8, C, lesson number 8 and the title is Our Final Destination. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, in this lesson, firstly, we will discuss the ayah here. We'll do reflection on, of the ayah and then we'll discuss the learning objectives and then we will discuss some of the main points uh, in this uh, lesson since we have already uh, done the full lesson uh, in the past. So, Ayah is uh, from Surah al Bayyinah, ayah number 7 and 8. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Inna al Ladina Amanu wa Amilu al Salihat, Ulaika hum khayru al Bariya, Jaza uhum inda Rabbihim, Jannatu adnin tajrim in Tahtiha al Anharu Khalidina fiha abada, Radi Allahu anhum wa Radu anh, Zalika liman khashiya, Rabba. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the people who have been good or righteous people in this world. And he's talking about what reward, reward awaits them. So how they would be rewarded in the hereafter or akhirat. So he says, indeed those who believe and do righteous deeds, it is they who are the best of creatures. So the first thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, saying that these people who do good deeds and are righteous people, first of all, firstly, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then at the same time, they perform good actions, they do good deeds. So according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are the best of creatures. They are the best of creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah says their reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with their Rabb, with their Lord. And some of the, the, their rewards are gardens of bliss with streams, rivers running in them to remain in them forever. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Him. That is for those who fear their Lord. So it should be very clear. That is for those who fear their Lord. Now the learning objectives are number one to describe Jannat and its bounties. Number two to list some actions that will take us to Jannat and number three to explain that we build our own Jannat or Jahannam by our actions. Obviously, the key words are Jannat, Jahannam, and Anhar. Jannat is heaven or paradise. Jahannam is hell. And Anhar is the plural of the world, Nahar, which means rivers and stream. So there is an activity here um, that is to reinforce the idea uh, what people would get in Jahan in Jannat, um, and probably in coming ayat we'll see what how people would be punished in Jahannam as well. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has outlined a couple of things that people would get in uh, Jannat, inshallah. So read through this and inshallah, and uh, try to outline them, number them, write them down and memorize uh, them inshallah uh, it's going to be beneficial for you uh, or probably it might be a motivation uh, for you to work hard to go to jannat so we already know what uh, jannat is uh, in the last activity uh, you saw a couple of ayat of the quran where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, uh, has talked about uh, some of the things that people would get or receive in Jannat. Now, how we can get to Jannat? What is 
what is that we should do that would earn us uh, Jannat? So Jannat has to be earned, you know. So first of all, there are people who have this false uh, uh, notion, this false idea uh, that uh, as long as you believe and uh, as long as you have the, uh, let's say, certain things, you your Jannat is guaranteed and you can go to Jannat and that's that's it and no nothing will come to you or no punishment will come to you uh, it's not like that it's not that straightforward um, yes if you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately eventually you are going to end up in Jannat uh, but if you have left this world with some evil deeds together with Iman, with belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you might have to wait for maybe thousands and thousands of years uh, before you qualify to get to Jannat. And even though some people might end up in Jannat after spending hundreds and thousands of uh, years in Jahannam, they would go to the lowest uh, part of Jannat, not to the higher uh, part of Jannat. So we, we need to keep this in mind. So Jannat has to be earned. You have to work for it. We, so we must fulfill some conditions before we leave this world. On the Day of Judgment, when our actions are checked, we want to be moved to Jannat and not Jahannam. One of the main conditions is uh, Iman. First of all, we need to strive to work hard to keep our Iman and our faith intact. Iman means belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following His commands and obeying the Quran and Anbiya and Imams. Iman and righteous deeds must always come together. So it's not uh, something free. I mean, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want us to go to Jahannam but he has created a system he say, he has said that you have to make your Jannat or Jahannam in this world by your own hand yourself if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to send people to Jannat or to, to Jahannam he would have created him in uh, Jannat or Jahannam but he gave a choice to us he said you build your own Jannat and Jahannam by yourself and I will give you all the necessary things power, energy, uh, you know, food and risk and body whatever we need, our existence to work towards going to Jannat or to Jahannam so it's up to us so now this activity on the screen uh, is uh, an activity that can give us a good idea what kind of actions we can do to go to Jannat. And uh, you should read through it and you'll find so many uh, good uh, suggestions by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa uh, for us to do in this, jannah, uh, in this world to go to Jannat. So Rasulullah for example said, I swear by Allah in whose power is, is my life. There is not a single person who prays five times a day, fasts during, during the month of Ramadan and stays away from sins for whom the gates of paradise will not be open. So one of the things, of, uh, a few things that people can do to get to go to Jannat is, uh, for example, to pray namaz and to uh, five times and to fast during the month of Ramadan and stay uh, away, staying away from the sins, etc. These would, inshallah, make uh, the gates of paradise open um, to be opened for us, inshallah. And uh, there are other uh, things as well. You should read them and outline, outline them and write them down here. Make a list of some of the, those things and do or perform them in your life, inshallah. So, it's a moment of reflection here. Jannat again is earned in this world through our Iman in Allah, correct beliefs and good actions. 
Imagine the angels stopped you at the gates of Jannat and you were given a form to fill out before you entered. And in this form you were asked why you think you should go to Jannah and what deeds qualify you to enter. Reflect and fill out the form below. So this is the form. Uh, fill it out, inshallah. Uh, what kind of actions and deeds you want to perform uh, to qualify to get to go to Jannat, inshallah. And it's an interesting story. Let's read this story at, as well. A young man was on his deathbed when Rasulullah came uh, and sat near him. He told him to recite the kalima, but the young man could not speak. Rasulullah asked if his mother was present. A woman sitting near his head said, Yes, I am his mother. Rasulullah asked her, Are you have unhappy with your your son? She replied, Yes, O Rasulullah. We have not spoken to each other for the last six years. Rasulullah asked this woman to forgive her son, for if she did not, then her son would not be able to recite kalima. At Rasulullah's requ request, she forgave his mistakes and was no longer unhappy with him. At once, the young man could recite the kalima. This story shows how difficult the last moments will be for those who make their parents unhappy. So even though some people might uh, uh, pray namaz and, and do other good deeds, uh, but sometimes they may fail in their duties towards their parents. Sometimes they, um, they are... Um, they curse their parents, sometimes they are disobedient to their parents, sometimes they uh, do some nasty things, bad things, and they are always um, creating problems for their parents. And p parents are really happy, unhappy with them. And so such people might not be able to even recite Kalima. Imagine the Prophet ﷺ, uh, teaching the Kalima to a person, and he is not able to do that. Imagine. This is this is something really alarming. We need to pay attention here. So this is why there's a fiqh fact here, and it says maintaining ties with one's relatives, or it's called silatul rahm is wajib, and serving those ties, sorry, or severing, or cutting off those ties, or qat a rahm is one of the major uh, sins. So it is a it's it's a sin uh, not to do sila raham, not to be good to your relatives, especially your blood relatives, especially your parents and your brothers and sisters, etc. Now, uh, in this uh, higher level, uh, we have to pay attention to one more point, and that is uh, performing good deeds is good. But at the same time, we need to stay away from haram acts as well. So it's not that we just keep on uh, doing good deeds and at the same time we do or commit sins as well. No, it, it, it wouldn't uh, like serve any purpose because we are doing, committing good deeds, good things as well as bad uh, you know, deeds at the same time. So it's nullifying the effects of good deeds. So it's important that we pay attention to this point. Bad deeds prevent us from getting close to Allah and may lead us to Jahannam. So it's not that we should just do good deeds. We need to stay away from haram or bad deeds as well. Imam Ujjabra Sallallahu has said, strive, try very hard. Try very hard to perform good deeds. However, if you cannot perform a good deed, good act, at least do not disobey Allah. Because if one lays the foundation of a building and does not spoil it, then even if the progress is slow, the building will definitely rise. But the person who lays the foundation and at the same time spoils it, then it is sure that the walls of this building will never be raised. So uh, there is an, there is a small activity here. Do this activity. Uh, it will, you know, inshallah, um, 
spark some good ideas in your mind inshallah as well now the summary the key points are jannat is a beautiful place which is filled with bounties and pleasures that cannot be imagined in this world number two iman or belief in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and following his commands will make us enter jannat number three not missing salat obedience to our parents and good akhlaq are some examples of good actions that help us earn jannat and number four we build our own jannat or jahannam by our efforts and deeds so whoever would un- enter jannat would enter through his own actions and um, deeds and the same is true with the jahannam if somebody uh, has not been a good person has been an evil person he would end up in, jah- in jahannam please uh, test yourself and write the answers here and uh, send them to me wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh